Okay. Welcome everybody. Uh, on behalf of Fabio Nascimbeni from Unimed, we are uh, here with more than 100 people attending this uh, webinar organized by the Erasmus Plus uh, Virtual Exchange Initiative. We have uh, um, some people joining again and some of you had the issues with uh, Zoom passwords and things like that. So we expect to have more people joining. In any case, the meeting is gonna be recorded. So for the ones of you who will not be able to attend uh, live, the, the, the webinar will be recorded. So the webinar of today is organized in the frame of the Unimed week, uh, which is taking place online. And this is the program. We're gonna have a, a short welcome by Marcello Scalisi, Unimed director. And then uh, I will have the pleasure to very briefly introduce you to the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange Initiative. And then we will go practical, trying to detail the upcoming opportunities in the different action lines of, uh, of the initiative. To then have a couple of, uh, I would say, luxury testimonials from the South Med region, uh, Alia Gilbrecht from Manaja in Palestine and Nawel Abdelatif from Université Sétif de in, Alg in Algeria two universities who, have, uh, who are examples of, of how to integrate uh, multiple activities from uh, virtual exchange uh, in, uh, in their work. So it will be great to listen to how they did it. Then some time for questions and answer and the plan is to finish at 12 or uh, slightly after 12 due to the small delay we got. I'm asking you to write your questions in the chat. So feel free to ask for any doubt and uh, in case uh, you have more uh, let's say elaborated question at the end in the last slide we will uh, show you a few ways to be in touch to get in touch with us uh, also for some bilateral conversations and some further discussions all right all is set i'm leaving now the floor to marcello uh, marcello please uh, thank you fabio grazie um, as fabio said uh, this is uh, the starting event of our Unimed Week in Brussels online. Our Unimed Week in Brussels is now is the fifth edition. Normally, is uh, an event that we organize in Brussels uh, every year uh, to discuss and to debate with the uh, European Commission about uh, the future initiative of European Commission related to the uh, academic cooperation with South Mediterranean countries. Um, normally, we have three days of event meeting with uh, DG Education, the International Dimension, of course, the DG, uh, DG Research, and uh, DG Near, and normally we have also a session in the European Parliament. This year, we were obliged to change our format and to in organize everything online, and we decided to have in two weeks several events and discussing again with. Uh, European Commission first, but also with several uh, international institutions about uh, the role of Euro-Mediterranean cooperation in, in this international dimension, this in very particular international situation. Uh, UNIMED is, uh, as you probably know, I saw in the chat uh, several of our members, uh, uh, you know, is a network of universities. We have now currently 100 uh, and 30 universities coming from 23 countries. And we help and support our members in uh, international activity to internationalize more and more their activity and to join among university for uh, initiative programs, projects, and so on. And the Erasmus Virtual Exchange, I think that was, uh, is and was a, a very nice experience. It's, I'm proud that today we, you will have Two universities that will show you what they did, particular two, two fantastic cases: the University of Anaja in Palestine and the University of Sétif Two in Algeria. But there are many other universities coming from the region that are actively cooperating with us, and I hope that this uh, uh, virtual exchange will continue in the future in a way or in another. Uh, not only looking at the COVID-19 impact that obviously obliged all, all of us to, to continue in this online dimension, but also because we need in all the way possible uh, to contribute to create this, what we say, Mediterranean generation. 
we absolutely need to improve capacity of our, of our youth to understand each other and to have opportunity to know each other and to share not only common values, but also their differences and their style of life and also trying to, to build a new, a new Mediterranean generation, a new Mediterranean uh, society. In the coming days, we will have several other webinars um, discussing with DG Education, for instance, about mobility, capacity building program, then with DG Research discussing about migration topic. All these topics were touched in some way or another also during all the uh, virtual exchange initiatives. If in case some of you are interested to join the other events of the Unimed Week, uh, go, uh, please go to our website. It's very easy to find the program uh, to register and to participate obviously is uh, everything is available for academic people to, to participate um, i participated in several uh, physical events uh, of virtual exchange in palestine and some way i did a presentation in algeria in egypt and i appreciated a lot the genuine interest of the academic community on this in this dimension and by uh, invite you, I encourage you to, to know more, and this session will be important for that, to improve the, the possibility for your university to be involved in such program that in any case will be part of our international dimension for the coming years. I stop here and I wish you a very nice uh, webinar. Thank you uh, very much for your attention. Ciao Fabio, ciao a tutti. <clears throat> Thank you Marcello, thank you very much. Uh, and actually we will be sending a, a, a link uh, to the Unimed Week program and registration uh, with the follow-up message to, to this webinar. So uh, you'll see a lot of interesting events uh, taking place online <clears throat> in the coming two weeks. Okay, so uh, I will be pretty brief uh, in presenting you the program for two reasons. First, because I guess uh, many of you know already what Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange is. Actually, we run a number of uh, activities uh, to present uh, the initiative in the last uh, weeks. And also because everything I say is, will be said, is said much better in this uh, website, uh, the, what we call the hub. Uh, you can see there the the link europa.eu slash youth slash Erasmus virtual or Erasmus virtual since we have many Spanish people online now. So there you can find not only all the information that we will be passing you but also you can find some entry points if you are a young person or a student, if you are an educator within a university or if you are a youth worker since the program is also addressing the youth community even if today we are targeting higher education. So uh, the, virtual, the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange Initiative is a, a pilot project by the European Commission, uh, which started in 2018 with the very ambitious objective of reaching 25,000 young people uh, and engaging them in uh, virtual exchange. And as you can see there, we have a double goal. So the first goal is to facilitate mutual understanding, mainly between uh, the, the European Union and the South Mediterranean, but also to develop skills uh, and develop uh, specifically intercultural skills and uh, a full range of soft skills that we will, uh, we will, be, we will hear from our colleagues in a moment. Um, as you can see there, the, the initiative is part of Erasmus+, Plus, uh, aiming at reaching at, at uh, outreaching and at uh, enlarging the, the scope of mobility activities. We, we don't aim at substituting for, uh, physical mobility, of course, but to prepare, enhance uh, and, uh, and uh, strengthen actually uh, physical, mobility, physical mobility activities. The initiative activities are aimed and can, can be joined by young people between the age of 18 and 30 from countries in the European, from Erasmus Plus program countries, so the, the European Union uh, and new countries, including, for example, Serbia, who just joined the Erasmus Plus family, and countries from the South Mediterranean. And as you can see there, we, we target, of course, our final target are students in your case, but we also target higher education professors that can join our activity and our trainings, university managers, staff, administration. And uh, so there, is a, there are some activities for many uh, of you listening now. 
So what is virtual exchange? As you will hear in a moment, uh, the different uh, activity lines uh, have some differences, of course. Uh, we want it to, to be as, uh, as differentiated as possible, but they all have something in common that are virtual exchange sessions. Virtual exchange sessions are people-to-people -people online real-time dialogues taking place in an environment like the one you see here in the slide, where interaction is facilitated by uh, professional fac facilitators to ensure that there is some meaningful discussion and some learning is taking place. They, they are sustained uh, and, and pedagogically sound processes, so meaning that uh, young people don't meet only once but meet in more than one uh, in more than one session and actually it is uh, technology enabled so this is one of the few uh, let's say exchange or collaboration activities that uh, can go on also in the present uh, uh, COVID emergency, so it's uh, fully fully online. For every activity that uh, we organize, we provide open badges, so a, a full-fledged recognition system, as you can see there, made of open badges with the Erasmus Plus and the European Union uh, flag. And uh, these, these badges are actually linked uh, online to the specific competencies that uh, uh, have, been, uh, have been acquired by, by taking the corresponding activity. So, and, and this can be shared through different uh, social media profiles and uh, through different online curriculum. So it's uh, quite an important component. Just a slide to show you that the program is going very well. We engage more than almost 21,000 people until March this year and uh, establishing partnerships with uh, more than 250 uh, organizations, including many universities and many of you are also listening to this webinar. So thank you for joining our activities. Uh, and especially we have also built this, we are building this uh, community of virtual exchange facilitators, which of course will be, let's say, surviving the, the program and uh, will be keep on working to facilitate uh, virtual exchanges. Another important point is the impact. Uh, young people and students who participate in virtual exchange activities in the different activities are normally very satisfied, as you can see there. And as you can see on the, on the right side, these are the, the soft skills uh, that are developed through virtual exchange. Some, some uh, activities have a thematic focus, as you will see, so they develop also thematic skills and specific, specific skills but skills like self-esteem, curiosity, critical thinking, cross-cultural communication, and the capacity actually to engage in relationships with uh, uh, people from different cultural background is what is uh, actually valued the most by, by our participants. And as we know, these are fundamental skills for our societies. Now, the key question for, for this webinar is, uh, can and how can virtual exchange be integrated in a university programming? We know that uh, most of you are now uh, redesigning or have been redesigning your, your teaching programs to have them online. And of course, it's, uh, it's always important to allow a, a good degree on interactivity. And if this interactivity is with international peers, is even better. So virtual exchange can absolutely be, become one component of your courses. And uh, there are different ways to do this. So you can either integrate what we call ready-made exchanges and we will hear about them in a moment, as a component of uh, one of your courses or as one laboratory, one short course on its own. Or your professors can uh, develop uh, their own uh, virtual exchange, their own virtual exchange project. And we will hear from Lorenza later on how to do this. But also, since many virtual exchange activities uh, are available, are open to students to register directly, you can also promote transversally the, the different uh, opportunities to your students uh, and asking them to register to the ones that uh, uh, they are more interested in. So the objective is of course to uh, start this process uh, slowly and cautiously. We know this is something new for many universities but as you've seen let's say we have already many universities who are partnering with us. Uh, we have already uh, a very high degree of success and already some uh, proven paths to integrate virtual exchange activities in, uh, in university courses and, and programs. 
Now, uh, last slide for me, then I will stop. Uh, we, what we will hear now from our colleagues are uh, some information about two, the two main families of activities that uh, we are offering. The first is what we call ready-made virtual exchanges. So these are uh, activities that have been designed by professional designers of virtual exchange and that are ready to be taken by students. So as, as you can see, there are different names. We'll go there in a detail in a moment, but these are ready-made. So it's, uh, let's say, uh, they're ready to be implemented and to be integrated. The second family has to do with uh, trainings and these trainings, uh, be, uh, especially the virtual exchange training is then uh, aiming at building the capacity for professors and staff to, de to design and develop their own uh, grassroots virtual exchange project. So this is the main difference between the two, the two families. Uh, all right, so I would like to give the floor now to my colleague Amani uh, for uh, the first, uh, to, to start describing actually what's coming up soon. So as you can see there, uh, deadline is already in July. So the activities that now I will describe are, uh, let's say, open activities for you to take part uh, from now on. Amani, please. Thank you, Fabio. Uh, hello, everyone. So um, as Fabio has been saying, uh, we're going to just uh, focus on uh, some of the... Voice. I don't know if it's only me. Sorry? I hear your voice a bit low. Uh, okay. I think I'll have to put the... Um... Can you hear me better now? Mm, not really. Okay, I'll try to speak up. Okay, good. Nice. Uh, so I'm going to focus a little bit on the ready-made exchange activities first. So um, the first opportunity, um, which is the lightest version of uh, our virtual exchange programs, is uh, the social circles. Um, the social circles is actually um, a program that offers young people short dialogue exchange opportunities. It brings them together um, from various backgrounds. Um, it can be youth within or outside the um, higher education sector. And um, they talk about a specific topic which is announced in advance uh, to tackle, um, let's say, the key issues around it. Um, basically, the, the upcoming topic is how to balance local culture and globalization. And um, the uh, sessions would be only uh, two sessions, two live sessions, but the duration of the commitment itself is 12 days. Uh, so for the next round, it's going to be from 3rd of August to the 14th, and the application deadline is the 19th of July. Um, this is a good entry point to virtual exchange, as I said, and uh, the students can actually sign up individually, like uh, they don't have to be introduced to this by a professor. You could provide them with the, the link to re register individually. And um, they basically spend those uh, two weeks. Uh, the first part would be a preparation to um, the actual live sessions. And then they would engage uh, on the um, uh, online, uh, let's say, portal that we provide them with uh, in uh, offline discussions. Uh, also uh, between and after the, the, the sessions. So this is for social circles. If you, you have any questions or if you were interested in this opportunity, I'm going to put the link uh, in the chat box uh, for those who would like to, um, to know more about it. Um, now, the second opportunity uh, that you have, which is a ready-made uh, virtual exchange course, is the Connect program. This is actually quite different. Uh, in the sense that um, it's an opportunity for uh, professors to integrate into an existing curriculum. It, it is designed in such a way that it has to be included within an existing course um, or offered as a standalone course. And it uses the proprietary online facilitated dialogue model to connect young people globally. So we try to bring um, uh, youth uh, around, uh, let's say, different uh, themes and uh, to try to build their skills and attitudes um, towards difference, uh, difference constructively. So basically, um, if you, um, you can see here on the slide that it says the duration and workload is four to eight weeks. 
it's the, it depends on the module uh, that you pick. So uh, there's like a, a module that's called Connect Express, another which is Connect uh, Collaborate, and uh, another which is Connect Global. So depending on um, the module, uh, the duration varies. Um, now, we provide these young people exposure to different perspectives, as I said, um, and we try to put them together to meet face to face um, with uh, people coming from different uh, cultures with the presence of neutral facilitators. Uh, the topics could be social inequality, stereotypes, cultural differences, uh, religion, um, social movements. So it depends on the module uh, that the professor picks. Um, this is actually something that the students cannot apply to individually. The professor has to apply and then you will, um, we will receive your application. We will vet it. Say, for example, you send us the application and you write in the narrative that you are teaching this course in the fall and um, that you have uh, at least 20 students to uh, join us for a partnership um, and that your students meet the requirements, which is 18 years old to 30 uh, years old and they are speaking um, a B2 level of English fluency. So you send us an email, uh, an, an application basically, and uh, we will be contacting you to secure um, application screening call, and we will discuss uh, the, the details uh, in depth uh, about what this partnership involves, how the program goes, and so on and so forth. Uh, the upcoming round would be um, taking place between the 15th of October and the 5th of December and the deadline to apply is uh, the 30th of July. And I'm going to uh, put the link for the Connect program in the chat box as well. So here you can have uh, more details on, oh sorry, I have been sending it to, okay, sorry, I'll send it uh, to, to everyone later. So you'll have more details um, on the different modules um, if you click on the link that I have just put uh, for the Connect program. Um, so also, so basically uh, we have had, um, I mean, we partner with uh, different universities coming from uh, different regions. For example, in the past uh, spring semester, um, we've had um, Insubria University from Italy. Um, they integrated into Connect Global, which is one of the mod modules um, offered under Connect program. Uh, and um, they uh, partnered with us with 30 to 40 uh, students um, um, coming from an, an, an undergraduate course uh, in interlinguistics and intercultural mediation. Um, for third year, year students. And um, at the same time, another professor from the same university uh, integrated uh, Connect Express, which is uh, again, another module under their oral expression course with 15 students. And uh, this was a part of their grade. Like they uh, allocated um, 10 to 30% of the grade to the participation in this virtual exchange um, course to make sure that there's an academic incentive for the students to attend. I think um, I'll stop here. I can't hear you, Fabio. Hello, hello? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Okay, I was saying, it's uh, let, let's stop here and if we have some questions, especially on the integration part, uh, we, can, we can take them later on. So, but yes. as, you, as you have seen, uh, both social circles, uh, the shorter, the shortest uh, uh, activity we have and the different uh, editions and kinds of Connect program are available. And uh, we, we encourage you to explore them uh, now because they will start in the fall. And especially for Connect, you need some minimal time to, to talk to us and to see how to better integrate them. Another very interesting activity that is starting now and I'm calling uh, starting in, in the fall, but for which uh, uh, in, possibility to register is open already now, is the Cultural Encounters online course for which I give the word to Juliet. Yes, thank you Fabio. Uh, I'm Juliet, I work for the organization that implements uh, this specific ready-made um, virtual exchange. It's called Cultural Encounters. Um, it has lots of uh, similar approaches to um, the things that Amani just introduced about the Connect program. Um, cultural Encounters is what we call an interactive online uh, open course. 
and it takes nine weeks where students uh, meet online but in addition to their online group meetings they also have some preparatory assignments and uh, they get access to a video lecture series and actually for the fall it's uh, multimedia because we're also going to use uh, podcasts uh, so to introduce it i can best maybe talk you through what it is for students to participate um, because what they do can we go back fabio yeah, to i'm trying <laughs> um, so students on a weekly basis for nine weeks they meet in their online group meetings for two hours um, these groups are culturally diverse and um, around eight participants um, before their sessions they watch the uh, video lectures they um, look at the materials and then online is where the actual exchange happens so they have uh, our trained facilitators there to guiding the process um, but in these groups um, is where the actual uh, dialogue happens also these groups um, they have several uh, skill building activities so it's not only the, the the dialogue efforts but it's also activities on uh, self-reflection creating awareness uh, critical thinking so all of that takes place in those online groups um, now for the students and how we make those groups um, our partners deliver, sort of give us uh, uh, students and we schedule them into diverse groups. So we, we try uh, to make sure that uh, your students are not together in the groups. Um, participants can select time slots that they want to take part in these online groups. Um, so we offer uh, uh, several options to them. These are some of them are during uh, uh, normal working or school university hours and some of them are in the evening or in the weekend so the schedule of students themselves is very flexible um, cultural encounters is always topical um, the full iteration so the one that's coming up will be about um, movements around climate change so key debates around climate change um and i can share a link with some more information on the actual uh, topics that will be discussed in the course outline um what's uh important to know is that it's more uh, uh, uh there are several activities and we provide pass or fail assessment um, if a university or an organization has a partnership with us we provide you as a coordinator with the pass fail information of the students and their progress. That means then that a university professor or your, you as a coordinator can take that information and work that into a, a grade or ECTS. So this nine week uh, uh, course, um, we have the workload estimated to resemble six uh, ECTS um for students and um, maybe as an example um we have uh, a lot of partners we for example have worked with hebron university and um what they did with the previous uh, course like cultural encounters is they offered it uh, in their university to um i think uh, in five different uh, university classes courses from different faculties like science and technology um, also law and political science and the participation in uh, this course made up 20 to 30 percent of the final grade of the students um, the success story here is that uh, students were so engaged and liked this concept so much that um, they enrolled uh, individually later on in social circles and some other courses that we offer because also the unique thing about cultural encounters is that on the one hand we work through partnerships but on the other hand also individually interested participants youth students um, just within the age range can sign up and register online 
individually. So they don't necessarily have to be affiliated with uh, a university or an organization. Um, another success story I could tell is um, actually some of the speakers that we have. So I won't go into that, but that's uh, with Sativ um, uh, University. And now I will uh, uh, explain a bit more about how they uh, um, work with our courses, but there are different ways of integrating. So you can do blended learning, you can offer it as an elective. And I just invite you, if you're interested to get in touch with us, uh, our team can schedule a Skype uh, call or we can give you more information via email on the different ways you can offer cultural encounters uh, to your youth students, uh, your network. I think I will leave yeah. it at that at the moment. Thank you. Fantastic, Juliet. Uh, I've seen many questions and already some interesting dialogues uh, also between participants. So thank you very much. I would like just to stop now for a moment uh, uh, before moving to the trainings to, to take a few, a few easy questions. I can take the easy one and leave you the, the difficult ones, dear colleagues. So basically, uh, many, a lot of interest, both on Connect uh, and uh, on a Cultural Encounter. So people want, would like to hear more about the application procedure and the chances one gets accepted. So if, uh, for students, when students apply themselves for social circles or for Cultural Encounter, they are automatically accepted, provided they are within the age limit and within the geographical eligibility of the program. Uh, whilst if you are a professor or from a university and you want to integrate one of these activities into your courses, what you have to do is to get in touch with us. Well, you can see in the hub, you can find the, the email to express and the, the form to express interest for this and then you will be talking to somebody like Juliet or like Amani and you will um, see how to how to integrate this uh, into into your activities. Uh, this is open not only to higher education to universities but also to vet vocational schools. I know that uh, a lot of vet actors are now participating so we are open these activities are open also to other higher education or professional education institutions. Taking, I'm taking another question. And uh, then in terms of practicalities, uh, so every university can participate in this. You don't need to be a partner in any Erasmus Plus project. So this is open to every university. You don't need to uh, compete for this. So there are no calls or competitions. You don't need to demonstrate anything. So this is really open to, to everybody. What you have to do, uh, this is another question about the agreement. You will have to sign a memorandum of understanding with uh, EVE, with Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange, basically to allow us to share with you the data of your students when we provide you feedback, nothing else. So it's a, it's a light MOU that can be signed by the professor or by the director of the department, by anybody. Uh, I, I took the easy ones. I, there, is a, there are a couple of questions on the, how it goes with credit recognition. So Juliet or Amani, if you want to take this. Um, I can start. Please. So just to uh, follow up on what you said, so basically there was a question before that on the, um, on the, um, on saying coming through professors, it says anytime you say through professors, you mean that professors only can submit the application for the Connect program? Yes, the professors are the ones who submit the application on behalf of their students because they are coming to include a group of students and the minimum to have a partnership is 20 to 25 students for the Connect program. Uh, and all the agreements and the terms are done, uh, made uh, with the professor uh, to uh, pick the right module for their students. For example, if they are um, scientific students, we are not going to um, give them, for example, Connect Global. We will probably advise them to have Connect Collaborate or Connect Express. Um, now, um, for the credit recognition, uh, so basically, each of the modules have a specific um, recommendation for the for the credit allocation for Connect Express, which is the shortest format of uh, Connect uh, of the Connect program. It's four weeks commitment, uh, and the uh, we recommend uh, ten to fifteen percent of credit allocation or a one credit course. Um, for for example, the longest one, which is the eight weeks. 
variation of the Connect program, which is Connect Global, uh, we usually um, recommend um, a total of um, 20 to 25 percent of the total grade or one credit per program. Um, this one is actually 25 uh, hours commitment. That's why we recommend uh, this much of the, gra the grade allocation. Um, I don't know about Juliet, but this is how we organize things. We usually recommend um, how uh, things should be um, graded. I don't know yes. if you want to, yeah, please. Um, so yes, we work in, in, the, in the same fashion in uh, the case of cultural encounters, just like with social circles, participants um, or prospective participants can also sign up individually. So then it doesn't necessarily go through professors like you said. Um, and then I saw a question about evaluation. Um, so I think for cultural counters and, and, and um, maybe also for Connect program, um, what we provide is if there is an MOU signed, because otherwise we cannot uh, share data about your students. But what we provide is their progress uh, regarding attendance and submission of assignments, which means did they do it? Did they come? Yes or no. We don't evaluate on the quality, uh, quality or um, the assessment uh, um, uh, uh, qualitative on their submissions. Um, this is because we deal with students from such a big variety of backgrounds, educational levels, that uh, having a, a system, uh, a standardized system in this is, yeah, a very complex. What um, we see uh, professors do is that students, their students that take part, for example, on cultural encounters, also provide their assignments to their own professors. Those professors then will, um, as a way in the blended learning, give another grade. Or what we see some professors do is they ask, for example, for a final reflection paper on the experience or on the topic. And that then is graded by the professors at an institution, and that's how their final grade is yep. um, made up. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they get, of course, the, the badge. So they also get this digital badge, which a lot of them are very proud of, and they uh, they share it on their LinkedIn and, and other uh, places. Uh, but these are all the typical things uh, about uh, assessment and how others did that you can discuss if you are then interested in this uh, with uh, Juliet or Amani or our other colleagues. But thank you very much for giving the, this uh, over, overview. Two other quick and easy questions. The first, uh, is Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange offering any funding for participation? The answer is no. We do not offer funding to organizations to participate or to implement activities, but all the activities are funded by the Commission and are coming for free to you. So as you can imagine, setting up these activities have a cost and this is, uh, this is uh, not, will not be asked to you. And then another, another question had to do with whether a uni students from one university can participate on their own, I mean, only from one university in one of these ready-made exchanges, or if you needed partnerships. No, you don't need partnerships here, because actually what will happen to your students, to your 20 students, for example, is that they will be put in groups, <coughs> in different virtual exchange groups, where they will interact not with students from their university, of course, nor from their country, but with students from different, uh, with different uh, backgrounds. Uh, there is a question that yes. I saw also about the question that says, um, are Connect program uh, courses open to students of only one university at a time, or do they simultaneously involve several partners? Now, the students will not be uh, coming from the same university, sitting in the same virtual room and attending the Connect program on their own. Uh, we will try to mix and match them uh, with other um, uh, students coming from various regions to maintain a balance in the room, to have this uh, diverse uh, backgrounds. Um, so um, obviously it would involve uh, all the other partners that we're working with. Um, but no, they will not be um, in the room sitting alone. And also I saw another question about the professor. Are they allowed in the room? 
Uh, obviously, no, because we try uh, not to have this uh, authority in the room uh, to have to make sure that the students are feeling comfortable and open enough to um, come across the barriers that they might have and uh, or the um, you know to be open as much as possible. So uh, we don't allow um, third persons such as the professor to be in the room, but we provide them with um, feedback reports and evaluation. Yeah. Thank you. I think we need to move up, uh, to move on. So uh, I'm using the question by Fernando. Fernando was asking if, is there a closed list of modules or can other ones, other themes be proposed? So this brings out, brings us nicely to the, um, the training opportunities, actually. Uh, what we have heard until now are, as we said, ready-made opportunities that are easy to be jumped on and very successful and very worthwhile for your students. But another thing you can do is to take part in some training opportunities. Now, um, sorry, yeah. So uh, the first one is uh, uh, facilitation training. Uh, Juliet, if you want to say something about this and then we'll move to the uh, virtual exchange training. Yeah, so um, already we mentioned it a little bit, but in those ready-made exchanges, um, the online group sessions, the actual dialogue, um, um, is guided by our trained facilitators. Um, they make sure that uh, the dialogue and activities are actually meaningful and uh, that the, the learning goals are also uh, achieved. They are not teachers because it is still a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, exchange environment. Um, so you can imagine that uh, we have uh, this specific training to have our um, um, yeah, uh, facilitators specialize in online dialogue facilitation. Um, these trainings are open to everyone. We also have um, professors or teachers, uh, coordinators that are very interested in uh, learning more how to do this, join uh, these trainings and become certified uh, facilitators. And there are different uh, formats um, to join. Maybe someone else can share the link on the hub there in the chat box. Um, so um, different formats, uh, a four week introductory uh, training course, which is uh, more uh, um, um, a paced course. And then there uh, is an advanced training of 20 hours, which is, uh, takes place in groups. Um, and you have uh, a trainer actually um, training you, obviously. Um, very interesting is also that these uh, facilitation trainings take place uh, in English, but also Arabic and French. So we uh, train also facilitators um, to um, yeah, work for uh, the different activities and those ready-made exchanges. So I invite you to have a look at the hub. Um, maybe it's interesting to you, but maybe it's interesting also to share in your organization as capacity building or learning opportunity for your colleagues or your staff. And it could also be interesting um, for your students as an advanced learning opportunity because the, the, the things also, if they don't become an active, uh, a facilitator with Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange. These are transversal skills when it comes to um, um, yeah, conflict, transformation or handling, and specifically intercultural communication. So, um, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for uh, this uh, flash introduction. As you see, we have many opportunities and we try to, to go through all of them. Then last uh, but very important opportunity is this training to design your own virtual exchange project. So this, as you can understand, is a bit different because it's not something ready-made where you go and you participate, but it's a training which is uh, uh, aimed at giving you the capacity to actually design an international virtual exchange project. Lorenza, please. Hi, welcome everyone. Um, so ATEP is a transnational exchange project and as Fabia was mentioning, these are different from the ready-mades that you've just heard about. 
In this case, you learn how to design your own project. So um, during the training, professors and educators um, learn what virtual exchange is, how it might be integrated into existing programs. But the difference is that it's you, the educators, the professors who design the content. We support you with that. We help you find partners because they usually end up as small um, transnational, international exchange collaborations, which last anything from three, four weeks. Some last uh, for a few months, it depends. Usually partnerships are maybe two, three, three way. We recommend starting small as we also recognize they are a lot of work to set up. So during the training, you'll, you'll maybe, you'll interact, you'll work on Moodle asynchronously and have little tasks. We also meet you in tutorials to discuss any challenges or doubts or problems or um, how this might work within your institution. So of course, these are very flexible. Ultimately, you can set up your own TEP in whichever language you want. We also encourage you to make use of online facilitated dialogue sessions, as uh, Juliet was saying, with, the, with trained facilitators. I'm one of them. We have a small team. So sessions can be in English. We've also done them in Spanish, Italian. Um, there are more opportunities in, in, in French and Arabic as well. So your TEP could be in whatever language you, you want and you would coordinate with us as to when and how this would, this would take place. So the next, um, the basic training lasts four weeks. You might meet, you might begin to have ideas about a collaboration. It might be interdisciplinary. They're not all language students. We've had uh, business, we've had engineering, we've had, so we will help you build that course and do online facilitated dialogues, which don't, focus on your expertise you know your expertise the, the the dialogue sessions focus on relationship building and critical thinking and all the other things that have already been mentioned um earlier on again professors and educators don't attend the dialogue sessions again we remain neutral and we help move the process along so um the basic training is four weeks you'll have tutorials you might get a taster session as to what your participants your students might experience during a, a, a synchronous session an online facilitated dialogue session and the next opportunity as you can see from the slide is uh september um, and the idea is that um you do in between the basic and the advanced training you might find a partner we do partnering fairs uh, when we try to match you up and find find you partners and then during the advanced training when you come to the advanced training the idea is you come with your partner and the advanced training is longer it's six weeks and you'll have more support to enable you to develop that project so the idea is you do the basic and the advanced training and then after that hopefully if you feel confident and if you feel like it we support you to get your tech underway um, and you can use a variety of platforms as well because the idea is that your participants, your students might collaborate on any number of platforms outside of, of, of Zoom. And we encourage you to, to have facilitated sessions with us which take place on Zoom. Um, what's the next? Uh, let's, so yes, um, yes, the idea is so there was two strands to the text, the training, and then ultimately that you take forward your own your own project yourself so um please feel free to we have office hours as well on wednesday mornings i can put links and uh details uh, of contacting me but uh, yes these are very different in that they're very flexible the timing the duration the number of partnerships that all depends on you your institution and what you're able to do with your with your partners we we do get positive feedback the students enjoy the facilitated sessions within your your collaboration um but also recommend that your partners are equally dedicated in setting these things up because they do take a lot of we can imagine across different time zones and with different term times semester times it does take a bit it does take a bit of work but we've had people come back and do two three four 
and they're like seasoned teppers now we call them and again your participants and your implementers will get a digital badge um, so yes the successful ones we've had um, yes healthcare professionals from uh, Utrecht from Portsmouth University from Joe Coping in, in, in Sweden different uh, so doctors nurses pharmacists all coming together to discuss different healthcare approaches um, and the tourist one was between um, again the Netherlands uh, Poland and Finland and they were language students tourism students business students so everybody came at it with their own expertise and got something from the exchange and I from the feedback they were supposed to have um, China on board as well and this was just when the COVID crisis started in February so they had to drop that there was also the idea that these people might actually physically meet of course that couldn't take place so my message there was yes be prepared for last minute <laughs> changes and things go wrong but what the professors fed back was that there was a lot of problem solving a lot of collaboration and a lot of uh, yes last minute changes which the students um, learnt got, got very much out of this and the other one Romania Hungary yes this was a history project which they've repeated three times now between a group of Romanian and Hungarian students to look at the different perspectives on a particular treaty which um, had a different impact on Romania and Hungary and history seems to be we've only had one history but history is perfect for perceptions and um, discussing the, these things so that's worked very well and they also met as well although not not this year and the other way we've used online facilitated dialogue is with uh, Dear Med, your Unimed branch partner um, as preparation so we had the students in online facilitated dialogue sessions as preparation for an eventual physical mobility this was last year so that piqued their curiosity um, and encouraged them to get to know each other before they actually met each other um, in Morocco I think it was at that time and the feedback again with that was was very nice they'd begun to get to know each other and then when they met physically it was it was it was nice they felt like they'd already started a relationship so just to say that online facilitated dialogues really focus on the relationship building and the getting to know you because the feedback consistently from professors has been in order to collaborate internationally together transnationally you need to understand who 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 you're going to be working with so the synchronous sessions provide a platform for that and eventual ongoing co collaboration outside of the um synchronous sessions so i think i'll stop yeah, there. thank you very much lorenza okay. very very complete uh, just uh, answering by voice to a few uh, well actually in the chat you you already had a lot of volunteers uh, for the for the okay. training so and actually let me repeat that all the links uh, to apply for things are on the hub so it's uh, pretty straightforward just go on the hub the link is there and this all will be also on the slides later and uh, just click on trainings and you'll get you'll, you'll be in touch with us for this and it's uh, pretty easy um, just to reply also by voice uh, so the trainings uh, all the trainings are also for, offered for free so there is no cost uh, involved and you can take uh, you can start the basic training without any a previous knowledge of virtual exchange and uh, you can design a tap uh, also within Europe uh, or within the South Med uh, or even better if involving the two regions so these were the most of the most of the trainings uh, most of the questions I'm sorry and then you have more uh, we, you, you might have more coming so please Lorenza keep an eye on that but I would like now not to uh, treat not nicely our testimonials to move uh, to Alia and Nawel to hear from the voice of some universities who are not partners uh, like uh, the ones you you heard until now of the uh, virtual Erasmus virtual exchange consortium but are partners of Eve in the sense that they have been working with us uh, uh, quite actively. Uh, Alia you wanted to share some slides did, did I understand well? Um, or hello, you can... can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me? Okay excellent yes I would love to if it's possible. I can, yeah, I think so. Let me stop sharing my slides and I think you can share yours. 
just a message to everybody. Since we started uh, 10, 15 minutes late, we should uh, go on at least until uh, quarter past 12. And uh, I hope most of the people have solved their password problems. We have uh, 250 people connected, people connected now. So I guess most of the problems were solved. Alia, can you share your screen? Yeah, let me try now. It wasn't working before. No, it's still saying only the host can share in this meeting. Um, if it's not possible, that's totally fine. Okay, yeah, let me, let me see. Yeah, now, now you should be able to. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, just let me pull up my Google Drive. All right. Hold on one second. Um, hmm, okay. Okay, it's not because I'm on my phone, I don't think it's going to work, um, which is totally fine. Unless I can share my screen. Did that work? No, as you, okay, as you no want. worries. So go on and tell, go on and tell your story. Yeah. I, mean, it's I, I apologize for that. Um, hopefully people will still be able to follow along and I'll be as brief as possible. I want to first start out by thanking you, Mr. Fabio, uh, Mr. Marcelo, um, for you know involving me in this, as well as the many other people involved in this whole consortium and initiative with Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange. Um, especially uh, Amani and Dora from um, the social circles and connect. So to start with, um, I, I broke up a, my very short presentation into two sections. One is focusing on international staff, like international officers, uh, people who work in, in international relations, and then the other section is for educators, but they very much overlap. Um, so I'm going to start briefly. Um, with international staff, administrative staff, who are trying to increase um, their involvement in the virtual exchange Erasmus Plus programming. So the first thing, um, oh, and by the way, yes, I was, thank you for the introduction at the beginning of the session. My name is Alia. I work at al Najah National University in uh, Palestine. I've been here for uh, several years now. Uh, just so you know where I'm coming from, it's a very large institution. It's a public institution. Uh, largest in Palestine, West Bank and Gaza, we reach over 25,000 students. Um, so starting with administrative staff, but this is important for everyone really, but crucial for administrative staff is getting, gaining the buy-in from your administration, from the people who make the decisions at your university. This is crucial for you to be able to do your job. Um, so for us, for me, that was not difficult because as uh, Fabio mentioned at the beginning of the session, a lot of the skills that are going to be uh, gained or offered through all of these programs directly line up with my with my university's um, internationalization goals, also sustainable development goals, SDG goals, uh, critical thinking, uh, soft skills, intercultural, being able to work with diverse people, um, just all of those skills that help our students become more successful in the global economy. Um, if you can promote that, it might help you. I'm a, there's already a lot of people on here. Maybe some of you are in decision-making positions, then you're already good to go, right? This is more for people who need to um, ensure other people can support their initiatives at their university. The next thing is um, what I've mainly implemented so far. We've just started this semester. So, so far I've actually found this session very informative. I'm still learning a lot about the many programs offered. We focused on social circles, we're in the process for uh, Connect in the fall, and we have also promoted other programs like uh, MOOCs that have been available and are involved in the debate competition. So I'm gonna focus on just general ways you can increase outreach. Um, with my university, and this it, I know is gonna vary depending on what university you're at, um, the culture around social media and outreach, for us, Facebook, the university's Facebook and social media accounts is a great way it, because culturally here, everyone utilizes Facebook from academics to, to students. Um, a great way to reach people for those ready-made direct student um, activities. 
So again, that goes back to the buy-in of your, your university leadership so that you can get um, public relations, social media on board with you, right? A couple of quick pointers with social media. If you're going to announce all of these great programs that um, were just expressed here, especially the ready-made easy ones students can independently register for, just make sure that you are writing in their native language, not English. People, even per, even students I know who are perfect in English, will just turn off and when they see, they are less likely to read. So try to try to do it in, in the native language of your students and just highlight the things they're gonna get. And that may depend on your student body, right? It, on the job, my students, the students here, they care about certificates. The badge program is essentially some kind of certificate they can add to their CV. We put that right at the beginning of an announcement on our Facebook or any social media. Also, they care about English skills, learn, developing their English. We put that right there on the top. And um, we have a, a, a lot of students who have never interacted with people from outside of Palestine. So we put that right at the top. You get to interact with your peers from Europe and uh, the Mediterranean. So we just, it, it's gonna probably vary depending on your student body. Try to just get their attention, draw them in, and easy registration. Also, if you do have strong social media, so this is something that will work with you. Um, short video, very short. Uh, like recorded video you can post on your university social media just explaining what this is because generally in my experience from everyone I've met in Europe and the US people are still learning what virtual exchange is so just to explain it to people in a very short video maybe have a alumni from a previous cycle um, say it's like kind of vouch for it that it's great and fun um, so these are just some quick ways if you do not have a strong social media presence at your university which I've seen many universities they don't have as a connected um, communication with their students and staff through uh, Facebook uh, try to target maybe uh, student registration portals where they have to register for classes put announcements up there um, also student societies associations clubs get in direct contact with them ask them to um, share with their social networks right so these are just a, a few things um, you can do as far, as far as the social media side um, as far as recruiting educators, I'm still on the the aspects for you know international staff here. Um, but yeah, as far as recruiting educators, for me, um, uh, my how I have found success as an administrative staff with actually not just attracting educators but getting them to follow up in a timely manner um, is to go through their boss go through their chair, go through their dean, ask the dean or chair to nominate educators for you. This thing, this like develops an increased incentive from the educator to follow up with you because they know that their boss picked them and they need to follow up. <laughs> um, but in general, this also goes back to the administrative buy-in, leadership support for you because you can't really um, even get the deans to cooperate if you don't have the, the university's full support around this. Um, so if I, for me, that was easy. If, if you don't have that, maybe you can per, create a short proposal, approach people who are in the positions to support you. Um, also highlight, um, especially for social circles, that's something I would definitely recommend because it's easy for, for, for professors to integrate into their courses with something simple without changing anything like just adding it um, in participation marks, for example, or asking for just to do it. And what's great about the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange um, is that they will actually provide you documentation and attendance for anyone who participates. So you really have a way to ensure that it is fair. Um, the other thing I would say is let the educators know what they're gonna get out of it too. You know, this is a great professional um, CV builder for educators because this is new. A lot of people in, in the universities are still learning what this is, and it's also the future. It's gonna be more and more, I mean, not just the pandemic, even before this, it's becoming more and more important globally in international education. It's gonna open up for educators more doors for international collaborations, as was just mentioned in the training opportunities. Um, you're gonna be able to shift through grants and um, project opportunities better because you're more familiar with virtual exchange. So, so tell the educators what they're getting out of it as well. Um, those are like the main points for the administrative staff trying to promote this overall. For educators, um, some of that hopefully applies to educators as well. Um, so yeah, back to participation, very easy to integrate for social circles. For connect, that does, uh, that does involve a little bit more investment and time uh, a bit. Uh, follow more follow-up from educators 
I'm currently working on because we're planning to integrate the connect program in the fall semester. So I'm working on institutional uh, recognition that's crucial here, um, which was also brought up uh, before me uh, with the badge system. It's really important that educators uh, feel appreciated if you're on this conference webinar right now and you're an educator. Um, you need to advocate for yourself, you should be getting recognition in your university for this additional work you're doing, especially if you're going to involve yourself in these training programs, initiate new uh, virtual exchange collaborations. That's a lot of work. You should be letting your uh, supervisor know whether it's your dean or another um, person uh, offer if you want to create um, info sessions, orientation sessions for your colleagues in your department. Become a leader because you deserve recognition for this um, because it is extra work, but it's worth it. Um, so yeah, just I'm currently as an international officer trying to create um, a more systemized way of recognizing. So work, um, we're working on like something small and symbolic, like a letter from our university president, recognizing and thanking the educators who, who volunteer their time in any of these programs. Um, also doing some training sessions and integrating the Erasmus Plus um, training program into that. Um, hopefully, if possible, I mean, I know all your universities are very differently structured. If you can create a university committee on virtual exchange, that might be another way to increase incentive where they're getting real visibility and recognition for their work. Um, and just uh, generally providing them leadership um, opportunities later down the line after you've done a cycle with some educators, offering them the opportunity to then lead trainings as well. So they're almost like uh, ambassadors and leaders um, within their field. So they're really being recognized. The last final thing I would say, um, oh, for educators is going back to participation and credit. The, like everything already mentioned, soft skills, you know, global competencies, all of these things are amazing, even for a short time, especially if your students have never even spoken or have had little communication with people outside their country. But at the same time, it can be scary, right? They may be speaking in an, a language that is their second language, or even if they're even if they're engaged in a program that is their native language, it can be a little um, uncomfortable, right? They're stepping out of their comfort zone. So adding that, um, going back to the points that's already been uh, beautifully um, explained earlier um, about the social circles and how to integrate that, I think by Amani, um, it's really crucial to just give them a little push because a lot of students are really excited, but they're also a little nervous. So getting that participation credit or some kind of great incentive is great as well. The last final tip I would say is if you are, again, this might be cultural, um, but if you have some way to connect with your students and follow up with them, uh, so what, it's really great because there is an email process to register for things like uh, the social circle. Um, and so they might get confused. You might want to give them reminders or announcements, give them a platform to share their experiences. So I've created uh, Facebook groups so people can join, educators can do that as well. Um, if you're not comfortable doing it with Facebook, maybe another way that gives students an opportunity to share their experiences with each other from your class and also ask you if you need anything. And I'm sorry if that took too much time and I really uh, have enjoyed this, so thank you. Oh, no, <clears throat> don't worry. I think it was worth to listen to. I mean, you are one of the best examples of how international relation officers should behave. The only problem is that if, if everybody would behave like you, we would not have enough energy within EVE to get all those students uh, involved, but still very interesting. And thank you for the tips. I will uh, point in a moment to a document that we prepared that is called the Handbook for International Relation Officers. Exactly. Thank you very much, Juliet, uh, for telepathically putting it there. Uh, all, well, similar guidance to what was now just proposed by Alia is, is also in there, including some templates that you can use exactly, like Alia was saying, to engage your professors, convince your students for the last step, uh, and so on. So absolutely very interesting. Um, bear with us a bit more. I see we are still a lot of people on the line. Uh, so I would like to give the floor now to uh, Nawel Abdelatif, another friend and a big supporter of Virtual Exchange from Algeria in this case. Thank you very much, Fabio. Can I share the screen, please? Of course, please. You can do it now, I think. Yes, I can. 
All right, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you all for this opportunity. Uh, it's really a great pleasure for us as University of Sitif II in Algeria to be part of the UNIMED and to be part of the F program as well. Um, so I'm going very quickly to give uh, this testimonial about the things that we have done at Sitif II University in order to promote um, the program and also in order to enhance our students to, uh, in, to get into this program. Uh, so I'm trying just to summarize, uh, CITIF2 University is uh, a university which is quite young because it has been created in 2011 after the split of a bigger university with more than 60,000 students. Actually, we have 25,000 thousand students with more than 900 teachers and three main faculties, the Faculty of Letters and Languages, the Faculty of Social and Human Sciences, and the Faculty of Law and Political Sciences. Uh, to delve into the internationalization was a must for us uh, since we have started. So we have taken a number of initiatives uh, since the inception of the university and uh, cooperation was a main focus. As a matter of fact, we have joined the UNIMED in 2014 and thanks to joining the UNIMED, we have been open to many opportunities and possibilities to develop our international cooperation. We have also developed a big number of mobilities in the ICMs, in the Erasmus Plus programs. We built a new cooperation ties with many universities worldwide. And we have also, when we are also coordinating and being members of capacity building pro projects in higher education. However, more needed to be developed according to our philosophy and internationalization strategy. That is why when we have been introduced to the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange, we have felt that this is a new opportunity and also a new challenge. That's why CETIF2 University went further in integrating the Erasmus Plus virtual uh, exchange program. The program was introduced thanks to the UNIMED and CETIF2 University became an active member in the first actions. The first action we got involved into was cultural encounters and the second one, newcomers and nationalism. The steps that we have followed in order to try at least to consider being successful. First, the EVE project was, was under supervision of the vice rectorate in charge of external relations, which means that we have taken the EVE program as an institutional program in order to be successful. The second thing that we have done was that uh, we have appointed an EVE focal point in our university. So we were referring to the focal point in order to enhance the activities and try to work always with the students and follow their, their advancement in the activities. We have also put call of application and launched the call of application by the university through putting the call on the website of the university, on the, uh, the Facebook page, on the Twitter page, in order to get all the students, the student population, know about the project and about the program. And then students were identified for the first two courses, thanks to the strategy that we have applied at the university. As a matter of fact, for the two programs in the first experience, we had 63 students who had completed the course out of 80. We had 80 students who have subscribed in the program and 63 who have really got the badges by the end. And we consider that this was a huge number and the first experience was successful. As an outcome also of the first experience, we had three ambassadors from CITIF2 University out of five. At the very beginning, there were seven and there there were six, seven, two from other universities who have abdicated. And out of the five, CITIF2 University had three ambassadors. We have signed then memoranda of understanding. We have very lately also signed a memorandum of understanding thanks to the DearMet project, which CITIF2 University is part of. And CITIF2, as a matter of fact, became the first Algerian university to adapt the program successfully. You can see here in this picture, in this photo, the first group of EVE students. We have the focal point, we have the group of students who got the badges, and we kept coordinating with them and following the activities in order to move on.
Now, how could this be successful? Institute 2 University Ev was an institutional project. This means that we have adapted and adopted the project and believed in the Ev program and Ev activity, and we have done everything possible in order to make it successful. Then we had the follow-up. Was it was permanent, and students were tutored through the courses, and the, the the focal point had to answer the questions every time they needed. Assistance was provided when necessary, especially when technical problems were linked to the internet connection were raised by our students. Sometimes we even uh, gave them help by assisting them through computers etc in order to succeed their, their program and students were invited to testimony on good practices many times when we have prepared open days and workshops about international cooperations we made these students who got the badges and the ambassadors take part and testimony on the good practices However, we have also faced some difficulties while applying for the program. We have witnessed two major difficulties. We recognize that there were losses in students through the program lifespan, and these losses were not manageable. We had subscriptions of more than 100, and then we finished with 50. So we were questioning ourselves why there is a loss of students through the lifespan. We, uh, the students that we have uh, asked why they are, they are um, stopping following the program answered that some of the themes and topics were not often interesting to a number of students. And I believe that what Lorenza has just presented by the, this TAP uh, program will be very useful indeed in order to try to answer this problem of uh, topics who are not very interesting by creating our own topics. This would be really a very good idea. Then uh, there were also uh, some wrong expectations to benefit from the international mobility, which was not often the case. And here, um, some of the students who have also subscribed in the program were uh, thinking that while finishing the program, they will benefit from an, a real uh, international mobility. So there was a wrong understanding of the EVE pro program that we have tried to explain uh, deeply after uh, we have known the different uh, causes. Now, what should be done next? CETIF2 University has enjoyed the first experience. We are very happy with the outcomes and we are willing to continue in order to strengthen the success of this program. So we are planning to make of the EIF program an embedded learning in the students' curriculum. This will be done starting from next year in September. And we, have, we are working with a group of uh, teachers in order to give them some uh, some works or some reports uh, in the uh, what we call here in Algeria the uh, transversal units of uh, their their curriculum here it is possible to ask the students instead of doing the report about an, a, a certain topic to take part to the EF program and the, some credits will be given uh, according to their uh, activity we are negotiating also possible attribution of credits in transversal units of the educational program this will take more time because it needs to go through uh, some uh, uh, pedagogical uh, conferences and commissions, but we are working in order to make it successful. Give advantage to EVE students while applying in international mobility. And here we are thinking of also uh, putting another indicator or um, another condition for the students who are going for mobility in the sense that those who are participating in the EVE uh, program will be will have uh, more advantages in uh, benefiting from this. And we are working closer, of course, with the EVE mm. facilitators to disseminate further the program and objectives. And uh, in this occasion, I thank the availability of Juliet and all the team uh, for this and Fabio for this to make it happen. How could it change the lives of students in Sitif 2 University? It gave them confidence while interacting in public. It has really changed their, gave them self-confidence, improved their English language speaking competences. It has also eliminated a number of stereotypes according to who are the others, um, uh, what, who, how they think. Finally, they discovered that they are not very much different from them and that they can talk and speak and discuss. Uh, it enhanced also intercultural understanding. They gave them a chance to practice internationalization at home and help them develop essential skills and uh, behaviors. Consequently, students developed more curiosity, empathy and awareness, and they started collaborative and virtual learning that breaks down borders. 
Um, finally, further actions planned by CITIF2 University is to develop an interactive course online, which will prepare students to get into this new Eve experience. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Noel. This was, uh, again, a great success story, especially I think the one of the last slides, uh, I think we, we will use it uh, to show one example of uh, the, the actual impact on students because we, we, tend, uh, we tend to think of, the, of these activities sometimes in two technical terms, uh, you know, how, how it works. But at the end of the day, the most important thing that was actually shown by our monitor, monitoring and evaluation data, but also by your testimonial is that students I mean feel that this is needed this is useful especially in this period so i think it's a it's a great testimonial and as you as you heard by the two testimonials of course both ideally both uh, political priority should be there in a university and this is the case of uh, CTIF2 uh, obviously but also a very strong international relation officers push we would say and this uh, brings me let me put on my slides again i want to show you just one last uh, couple of slides uh, um, also because i think we need to close soon we still have a lot of people online and that's uh, that's great so i just wanted to show you what's next uh, and uh, in the meantime i'm asking my colleagues if you have some uh, if there are some questions uh, uh, i see you are you are replying through the chat but uh, well i'm reading this and then uh, leaving you the floor for some answers so basically just to summarize uh, the the first thing you should do and you should keep on doing is visiting the hub this is the hub with the website there so and there you can find all the information that we provided uh, this webinar including the, re the recording of this of this webinar that will be put on there very very fast so uh, visit the hub Number two, register to the newsletter so you can get uh, updates uh, every time there is something new. Number three, uh, in the resources area of the hub, you can find the handbook for actually both also for youth organization, but also for higher education, international relation offices, officers. And this is very important because it actually details all the steps uh, that Alia was describing before. So it gives you some tips and some tools on how to actually spread the, the virtual exchange uh, um, gospel into your, into your institution. And then if you still have questions, apart from writing to us, uh, you can join uh, the drop-in sessions that we organize every second Monday. Again, you can find information on the hub. These are moments where you can just uh, connect online and uh, ask your questions. And if you think you're ready to integrate virtual exchanges in your activity, you have seen plenty of uh, email contacts and links, but also you can contact us at erasmusvirtual at unimed.net and there we will direct you to the colleagues in charge of every specific activity. I'm leaving now the hub on the screen and asking uh, Julia, Tamani and Lorenz and the colleagues if there are some questions which remained unanswered. Um, I will start. I just saw a question from A. Belen, uh, who asks, could the IRO act as a professor and apply uh, for the Connect program? Yes, the IRO can, uh, can apply on behalf of the professor. Uh, for I think all the programs that we have just uh, and the opportunities that we have just shared and uh, Thank you everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to email us and uh, we will get back to you Thank, Thank you, very you much. everyone Hope we've managed to answer most of your questions tech drop-in sessions are on Wednesday mornings between 10 and 1 CEST I've put the link in the chat if you want to talk about tech training or setting up your own project feel free to drop in no appointments necessary um but, but do come and chat to us thank you fantastic juliet yes i'm um I'm, I'm very happy to see the amount of interest and also the the great on topic questions in the chat i hope um everyone feels a little bit informed and inspired also by all the examples and i hope you see this as a, a first introduction and you get curious to, to Erasmus Virtual Exchange, Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange, and now you can contact us and 
we help you explore uh, what options are best for your youth or students and um, just see how we can collaborate. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm asking uh, Nawel uh, if you want to say something. I see that uh, Ali, I think, left or she dropped out. I don't know, Nawel, if you want to say a last uh, word. Well, I, I just want to thank you for this opportunity and this, for this great program. And we are uh, looking forward in order to do more and better in this initiative. Thank you and good luck. Thank you very much. I don't know if Marcello, I don't see your video. I don't know if you are, if you want yeah. to say. Oh, ah, yeah. 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 Just, please. No, you want uh, to say? As, just as usual, I'm impressed about the, the, the quality, not only of the speakers, of course, but the quality of the participation. That is amazing. I show us another time how interesting, uh, relevant is this. Uh, a uh, virtual exchange program, this opportunity that the European Commission gave us through this uh, uh, pilot initiative. And I hope that this uh, pilot will be become soon something that would be stable in our international dimension, in our international experiences, in particular in a region that is quite important for not only for Runimed, but they can say for all of us. Thank you very much. So last point from our side, as I, I was writing in the chat, we are going to write to everybody, including the ones, everybody who registered to this webinar. So uh, also to the ones who for some reason couldn't connect uh, by sending you the PowerPoint, the link to, to the video recording and the chat uh, saved. Actually, this is something we never did, but you're right, there were many information in the chat. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, you got a lot of, uh, I think, ways to get in touch with us. My only recommendation is to, even if you saw that many things will start, many of the activities will start in the fall, so after the summer break, and we, we all deserve a good summer break uh, this summer after the heavy period we, we went through. I, my suggestion is to start before the summer break to get in touch and as soon as possible to, especially if you want to integrate uh, uh, some activities uh, uh, into, your, into your courses, because this, as you heard, is something rather straightforward. So you don't need to design anything or you don't need to spend a long time in designing things, but you need, of course, to do it right. So to talk to people like Amani, like Juliet, like Lorenza, <coughs> and to really, take some time, it's uh, I think a couple of uh, uh, chats, uh, you don't need a lot of work for that, but it's important to do it uh, with some time. So my, my suggestion is uh, get in touch with us uh, this week or next week as soon as possible so that uh, when the activities will start, you will be able to have as many students enjoying them as possible. Any final word by my fellow speakers? I've just been monitoring the chat. I think we've addressed everything we, we can and they're going to get the information, so hopefully. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the help and thank you everybody for your uh, very active participation. It was great actually to see people exchanging even phone, phone numbers during yes. the webinars in the chat. So this is becoming actually a, an enlarged Erasmus virtual exchange family, which is pretty nice. Thanks uh, to our testimonials who actually gave us an impression of what can really be the impact of such an initiative by the European Commission. <coughs> and I'm looking forward to see you online, on the Hub, and in other events. And uh, we will put a link in the mail we're going to send you also about the, the other uh, events of the Unimed Week that is taking place this and next week. Have a good day, everybody, and thank you very much again. Thank for you, everyone. Nice to... Bye. 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 Ciao. Ciao. Bye. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you.